Well, thank you uh, very much, Frank. And it's a real pleasure and, and privilege to be here. This is a great spot. And it's a great meeting. And I'd uh, like to thank uh, Claudio and, and John and the rest of the committee for, for inviting me. Yesterday, we went looking for alligators, found about 12 and uh, uncountable numbers of birds. So this is really quite a place, and, and I, it's great to be here. Uh, I'm going to be talking in the next few minutes about EVAR technologies uh, in the present time, some unmet needs and future uh, perspectives, and uh, let's see, which button do I press here? I guess. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, I'm going to be talking a little bit about the past, a little bit about the present, uh, somewhat about the future, and most of my remarks will be restricted to EVAR for uh, AAAs. Some history that's known and unknown. Uh, everyone knows that Juan Perotti uh, started, the, or was one of the, the starters of this business, and in the late 1980s, he did a lot of experimental work uh, in animals. What many of you may not know is that the first endograft for uh, an aneurysm, actually a thoracic aneurysm, was performed by uh, Nikolai Volodos in 1986 in Russia. He doesn't get much credit, but he was actually the first one to do it. And then, uh, of course, a brief clinical history with Ivar in 1990, uh, Juan Perotti and his colleagues, including uh, Claudio Schoenholz, did the first Ivar uh, for AAA in, in Buenos Aires. And in 1992, we uh, induced uh, Juan and Claudio Schoenholz to come to visit us in the third world of the Bronx, and we did the first EVAR uh, in the uh, USA together. Then in 1999, the first FDA approvals of grafts uh, occurred, and in 2009, uh, there, have been, there are currently five approved stent grafts uh, in the uh, USA, and some others are on the horizon. The first grafts uh, by Perotti and his colleagues were either a singly uh, stented, uh, should have a pointer here too, a singly stented uh, graft, which didn't work very well for obvious reasons. And then uh, Perotti went to a doubly uh, stented graft, which also didn't work very well, although it worked better than the singly uh, stented graft. And this was the device that we used together with uh, Perotti and uh, Claudio uh, in New York in 1992. It was simply a Dacron surgical graft to which a Palmez stent was, shown, was sewn. And our first case, which did work, was a singly uh, stented graft. Uh, we then evolved in 1993 and four to do what, uh, use this graft, which we called a MEGS graft, Montefiore Endovascular Grafting System which was really a derivative of uh, the original graph that uh, Brody had shown. And uh, this is a occlusion device, also surgeon made, which we used to occlude the opposite common iliac when our graft was used in the aortofemoral position together with this occlusion, the fem-fem bypass, and often hypogastric occlusion. And uh, in 93 and 94, we used this graft uh, for both uh, difficult uh, elective aneurysms and uh, uh, ruptured aneurysms. And this was one case which was seminal to me uh, because I never thought it could be done. Uh, but this patient was totally inoperable because of heart and lung disease. A number of big aneurysms. They don't look so big here because they're all full of clot. But he had this nine and a half centimeter left common iliac aneurysm, which was extremely painful. Uh, we were induced to, to treat him, uh, and it went, even though it took about 10 hours, went rather well. Uh, and this patient was actually, uh, did well from his aneurysms. His pain was relieved, and he lived for uh, more than uh, three years before dying of his comorbidities. And this was the first uh, ruptured case ever performed, again, because we had this uh, Meg's graft available. Uh, and again, this was an inoperable patient for a variety of reasons. And his aneurysm was excluded, and he also uh, lived for more than three years uh, before dying of his comorbidities. So my perspective on EVAR is that I was very lucky to do the first EVAR outside of uh, South America, thanks to Claudio and, 
and won. Uh, and it really changed my perspective. I'd, I'd always been an endovascular enthusiast, but back in 78 and 88, when we used some of the earliest uh, angioplasties and stents for uh, critical limb ischemia, I always stood in the angio suite while our radiologist, uh, Spray Reagan, uh, did the procedure and I did the worry. But then in 1992, when we did this case with Claudio and, and Juan, for me it was an epiphany. I, I realized that uh, if we as surgeons didn't do this stuff, we were going to be out of a job. And so I was one of the first senior vascular surgeons to advocate the adoption of endovascular techniques. And whereas I thought I would be greeted as the messiah for bringing this to surgeons, I wasn't at all. Uh, I was greeted as a pariah for all this crazy stuff, working with radiologists and things like that. Uh, and it took them about five to seven years before they accepted the fact that this was the way to go. And some still haven't uh, accepted it. Uh, Clearly, EVAR has gone from the uh, experimental to the mature. For me, it changed my world, as I mentioned, realizing uh, that this was going to be the wave of the future. But it also meant that vascular surgeons had to become endocompetent. And that was something they didn't uh, accept, and some of them still haven't accepted.